Greetings friend, I will show you the one Sudoku hack that easily solves competitive puzzles. I'll use it several times in this puzzle, including how to solve the green cell. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. First thing you may notice is if you see this one cutting across row seven and this one coming down, you have one place for a one. So this is just a little cross hatching. Since there's only one possibility here in the block, we can solve that for a one. And now let's look at the twos. You have a two coming up here in column one. You have this two cutting across row six. So there's only two possibilities for a two in block four. And I'll mark that. This kind of marking is called Snyder notation. Anytime in a three by three block, you have two possibilities for a can't, you can mark it. So if you solve one of these cells, we can solve the other one right away for a two. It also acts as a pointing pair. And what that means is since these twos are in the same block, but also the same column, that means a two cannot be anywhere else along column two. Because if you put a two over here, you'd have no place to put a two in block four. So pointing pairs, very important. Okay, something else we can do with these twos. You have this two and eight right here. It cuts all the way across row eight. We might notice there's an eight and a two coming down column eight. They both see this block. It leaves only two places for a two in block nine. And since the two and eight can only be in these two possible spots, and I'll mark that, that makes them a hidden pair because they are two possibilities out of multiple, but they have to be either a two or an eight in these two cells because you have nowhere else to put them in block nine. I cover hidden pairs in my free Sudoku solving guide you can get from the pinned comment below. All right, let's remove these colors and let's move on to the threes. Nice thing that this two eight does is it actually gives us something that we can use for solving. You see how this three cuts across row eight. So now there's only two possibilities for three in block nine. And since they're in the same column in the block, they are a pointing pair. It's also called lock candidates whenever candidates are in two separate houses, which is a Sudoku row, column, or block. And where this helps us is right here in this cell. You want to look all the way up this column and go, what can be in this cell now? Well, you notice it can't be a one, a two, a four, five, six, eight, or nine. But it can't be a three either because of the pointing pair of threes. This can only be a seven. And the only way we'd see that is by using the pointing pair. And now we can use this to solve some more sevens in this puzzle because of this seven there's only, and this nice hidden pair, there's only one place for a seven in block nine. And now with these two sevens and this seven, we can solve for seven right here. And with these two sevens and this seven, we can actually solve for seven right here, displacing that Snyder two so we can solve for the two right away. And now you might notice you have a two and a seven here in block seven. You have a two and a seven here in block four. Where can the two and the seven go up here in block one? Well, it can only be in these two spots. This is another hidden pair. And hidden pairs are powerful, but there's not the hack I'm talking about. You will encounter these quite a bit and they're very helpful, but it's not the hack I'm talking about in this puzzle that's going to solve this green cell. Okay, after doing the twos and the sevens, let's now look at the fours. You have this four cutting up column six. You have this four cutting across. There's only two possibilities for a four here in block two. And since they're in the same row, they're a pointing pair. It means fours cannot be in these spots anymore. You might notice here with this four cutting across row six, there's only two possibilities for a four in block four. And they're also a pointing pair. So I'm going to color. You have this pointing pair right here. You have this pointing pair right here. And then you have this four right here. So where can a four be in block one? Well, it can't be here or here because of this pointing pair. And it can't be here because of this pointing pair. And it cannot be here because of this four. We know this has to be your four. So we use two pointing pairs right there to solve for that four. Awesome. All right. After doing that, we also can mark some fours here in block seven because of this pointing pair. Four cannot be here because of this four cannot be here and this four cannot be here. The fours are limited to these two spots. I'll mark that. And then let's move on to the fives. 
you have these two fives in columns one and three. Only place for a five now in block seven is right there. So we can solve that. And then with these two fives in rows one and three, there's only two possibilities. So I will solve, I'll make those marks for Snyder notation. And in the case we can solve those, we'll be able to solve a five quickly in that block. Now let's look at the eights. We got an eight cut across here in row two. You have this eight coming up column two. Only one place for an eight in block one. So we can solve that eight. Let's look at the nines now. You might notice we have a nine cutting across row three. You have this nine coming up column seven. Where can a nine be in block three? That's right. It can only be right here. And anytime you solve a cell and it displaces a Snyder mark, you can solve that other cell right away. And so we're able to do that. What else can we do with these nines? Well, this nine cutting across row seven means there's only two possibilities for a nine in block seven. And so that's a pointing pair of nines. And then with these two nines, you'll notice that the only place to put a nine in block one is right up there. After solving this nine, now we can look at the ones. You have this one cutting across row three, only one place for a one in block three. And this leaves two possibilities here, which would be a two or a three. And now this would be called a naked pair because those are the only two possibilities for those two cells in the block and in the row. And this is not the main hack I'm talking about either, but it will help us solve another cell. Since the two and three are limited to these two spots and these are all filled out, the only cell that's not filled out is this one. And the only possibility left is a six. So we can solve that cell now for a six. Okay, after solving that cell for a six, you'll notice here that you have two possibilities in block one remaining. It can't be a two seven. This can be a three or a six. You also have two possibilities remaining in column two, three or six. So these are naked pairs. They're going to help us with the filling out, but it's not the main strategy I'm talking about. In fact, we can do one even better. You might notice right here that this cell can't be a one, two, four, five, seven, or an eight, or a nine because of this pointing pair of nines. This can only be a three or a six as well. So this is another naked pair of three, six, which leaves a naked triple right here. This is, and I'll color it, a naked triple, one, four, nine. All right, so we're gonna put a one, four, nine right there. 149 right there. And you will see these pop up in competitive puzzles very well, but it's not the hack I'm talking about. And what we know, since this is a 149, this can only be, uh, you know, either three or six to go along with this cell. So this is now your three or a six as well. And we're making progress and we're getting close to where we can solve this green cell. Now let's look here. We're starting to fill out more candidates. What can be in this particular cell? Can't be a one. Can't be a two, three, four, five, seven, eight, or nine. This is a now a naked single six. And now with this six, nine right here, and this nine and six right here, we can put that as a hidden pair of the six and the nine, which will give us some more restrictions in this puzzle. Because now you have three possibilities remaining, a one, three, or five. And I'm about to show you my neat naked triple trick. You notice that you have a five and a one in row seven, and then the one's repeated in row nine. We're going to be able to solve all three of these cells easily. Because of the one and the five right here, this has to be your three. And since the one's repeated down there, this is going to be your one, and that's going to be your five. And this neat naked triple trick isn't the hack I have, but it will help you solve these puzzles. We're getting really close to that green cell now. All right. With the fives, we, we solve there, and this five and the five in column five we can solve for a five right here in block eight and then in block seven you have these two threes the only place left for a three now is going to be right here because we can solve this for a six because the three is right there so that's a six this is a three which displaced that snyder nine displacing that snyder four we're going to get some more solving done because it is three this is a six that's a three this is a six that's a three making a lot of good progress here and after doing all that solving, now we can finish row eight because this is a full house, meaning eight candidates are filled out. We only have one remaining. That's got to be your four. All right. And with these two fours, 
we're going to displace that Snyder 4 and solve for a 4 right here in block 2. After the 4, we have these two 1s. And this one, we can solve for a 1 right there. Okay. And after doing that, we can solve some 5s. We have this 5. Wow, I covered all the 5s there. Okay, we have these two 5s. And this 5 means we can solve for a 5 in block 5 right there. And with these two 5s, the only place for a 5 in block 6 is right here. All right. And now it's time to fill out that green cell. You've been wondering, what is the hack I've been talking about? I've actually shown it to you quite a few times already. I just haven't called it out. What we have in this cell is it can't be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7. So it looks like this cell could only be an 8 or a 9. But if you notice that this 8 cuts across row 5, it leaves two possibilities for an 8 in block 6. And since there's two possibilities and they're in the same row, they are a pointing pair. Okay, so this pointing pair means this can no longer be an 8. Because if you put an 8 right here, there would be no place to put an 8 in that block. So we know this cell now has to be a 9. And this I saw trip up even cracking the cryptic. Mark Goodlip missed it in one of his solves. I'll put a link to that video right here. But subscribe and share this video if you like to solve pointing pairs. That is the Sudoku hack you need for these hard competitive puzzles. After doing this nine, we know this is gonna be a six and that's gonna be a nine. And now we can look with these two nines and notice where can a nine be in block eight? There's only one place left for that nine down there. With these two nines, there's only one place for a nine now in block four. We can get rid of those nines. We have the one four naked pair. I don't see a one here in row six. I got that one right there. So this is your one and that's going to be an eight. Okay, we got the nine there. We got the eight here. We're missing a two, three, and a six. I have a two and a six right here. So we're just going to do some naked and hidden singles, cross hatching and hidden and naked singles to get moving on with this puzzle. All right, and with this six right here, that's gonna be your two, and that's gotta be your six. There's only one possibility left in the block, so that's gonna be a two. And these twos, this is gonna be a two, means this has to be eight and a two. This eight is gonna displace that Snyder eight. We're gonna be able to solve for an eight right here. This two means we can disambiguate the three and the two naked pair up there. I don't see a one in the column. We can solve for a one, which, if you have the opportunity, you always want to disambiguate these naked pairs or hidden pairs once you figure this out. So like with this two here, I want to solve this first. The seven and the two. Okay, now I have this nice full house. I don't see a seven in block two. Now I put it there looking for a three and an eight. I got my three right here. So this has got to be your three. That's going to be your eight. All right, looking for a three and a four here. I got my four. That has to be a four. That has to be a three. We have two possibilities left. I don't see a six or an eight yet in block eight. Here's my eight. So that's got to be your eight. And the last cell is going to be a six. Watch this next video to see more competitive Sudoku hacks. Please consider support me through my Buy Me a Coffee page and invest in the future of smart hobbies. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching.